Hello and welcome. I am Shashank Mehta, founder at thewholetruthfoods.com and you're listening to the Whole Truth Project. Hey folks, it's my absolute pleasure today to welcome Jaydev Unadkar to the podcast. Not that Jaydev needs an introduction, one of the youngest cricketers to get propelled from district cricket to representing India in the under 19 World Cup and then to the national team and many many IPL franchises in between. The only player after Malinga and Badri to take a hat trick maiden over in the IPL that too in the last over, and he recently bowled another maiden over and got married to Rini, <laughs> his wife. <laughs> Which interestingly is also how we got connected with him, but that's another story. Uh, anyways, congratulations, Jaydev, and welcome. We are so excited to have you with us today. Hey, Sashank, thank you, thank you for the nice welcome, and yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Um, um, I awesome. think I've been. I've been in touch with uh, with the whole truth since my wedding, and it's a special occasion how we got in touch. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was absolutely our pleasure to play a small part uh, uh, in yeah. that special occasion for you. And and Jadev, you're such an accomplished uh, uh, cricketer, and and there is so much we can talk to you about cricket, but we are kind mm-hmm. of stupid, and and we don't want to talk about anything of your. Uh, you know, professional achievements. We actually want to give people on this podcast, uh, our viewers, a sneak peek into your food and nutrition and fitness life behind the scenes. That's why we do this, so that you know everyone can get uh, an idea of how even you know professional cricketers at the highest level operate in the background and what all goes into making them uh, who they are. So I want to start by just asking you. Tell us what a day in Jaydev Unadkar's life looks like, and a day which is a non-match day, a regular day looks like. Uh, uh, talk mm-hmm. us through your day. Do you mean a day in the bubble or just without the bubble? <laughs> Because all I'm doing at the moment is, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we are in the bubble, so there's hardly anything yeah. that we do. To be honest, so me and Rini have been watching plenty of shows. <laughs> But yeah, I think yeah. if we talk about life in general, uh, if it wasn't quarantine and you know i think the day comprises uh of um and, you know the it, it revolves around my training session basically if i am not playing cricket so either i would be having a say a gym or a running session in the morning um early in the morning at times or maybe late late uh, mornings as well so as i said it depends on uh, what time i am training uh ideally i would train two times a day if i am not playing so it would be morning and evening and uh, uh apart from that yeah i think um uh, doesn't um uh, there's nothing much uh, going around uh, in terms of um uh, you know planning and stuff you know it's not similar to what you do say uh, when you're into a business or when you are in a um Uh, in a job but um yeah as i said it's about uh, taking care of the body most of the times and i would go to the physio if i am feeling any niggles or anything in the body i'd go get a massage when uh, i've trained for 2 3 4 days in a row so yes it's i think it's kind of that and and like um um i think the the goal the goals basically are short term goals um there would be times when i would just be training for uh, uh for a feel good uh, factor you know um i would feel um i just want to go out there and run 5k so just i'll i'll do that but at times there will be some specific goals whether uh, bowling related or just uh, general fitness related if i want to improve something in my bowling say i want to improve uh, my jump while uh, while bowling the delivery so then the training will be specific to uh, that particular area and um, i think that's how nowadays uh, people i mean all the players are modifying their training schedules as well it's becoming a lot more professional than what it was and people are becoming educated about how training is going to improve their performance on the field so it's the same with me yeah. i think i i love Uh, going deep into those matters uh, have uh, you know training have nutrition and have everything that you do off the field is directly related to what you do on the field 
Awesome. I really want to double click into that and, <clears throat> and understand a bit more in detail. So, so like, do you have specific uh, workouts for endurance versus strength versus flexibility? And as a fast bowler, what are you focusing most on? What what is the biggest factor into you improving your on field performance? Yeah. Um, so I think fast bowlers are probably the guys who work the hardest on the field. If I can say that. Even uh, in our sport, you know, that they say there are two kinds of uh, athletes. You know, one are fast bowlers and one are the rest of them. So that's uh, that's something that we are uh, you know bound to do. We are supposed to work the hardest. We are supposed to keep the body in check all the time because even a slight niggle can become a big injury, can be converted into a big injury. So need to be careful about uh, about the routines as well. It's not just about uh, training hard. I think it, at times it's about maintaining small routines like uh, stretching well, um, you know, cooling down after a session well, and uh, you know, getting proper nutrition in after. Uh, if say if we are playing in this humidity in Mumbai, so we need to have uh, those extra electrolytes in the body before the game and after the game. Not, I mean, just not to be dehydrated and then. You know, once you're dehydrated, you can face other issues. So, I think you need to be aware about those sectors more. Uh, I think everyone uh, um, nowadays knows those things, but it's about doing those things regularly, which can actually help an athlete perform better out on the field, I would say. No, absolutely. And, and I love that comment about uh, there are the fast bowlers and there's everyone else. So, I want to I wanna compare the two. So, you know, uh, when we look at the the big strong batsmen like the Gales of the world, who who it seems like they just flick their wrist and the ball goes out of the window, uh, uh, or the Dhonis of the world who can do that helicopter shot with their wrists, etc. Versus the training of a fast bowler, like is there a difference in terms of like are these guys focusing a lot more on upper body strength and on shoulders and strength in general, whereas for a fast bowler both endurance because you have to keep at it for so long and then go and field in the outfield also etc and and you need shoulder strength to to pitch the ball fast uh, yeah. how do your training schedules differ from say a batsman yeah so i think uh, you know those 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 names that you took or you know, some of those big names in world cricket many of them are natural athletes you know they are built like that uh, naturally, so it's not training that makes a Dhoni look like Dhoni, or it's not training that gives Gale that power. You know, those are the extraordinary guys that we cannot actually compare others to. But if you see in general, if you talk about uh, you know fitness in general for batters and bowlers, I think uh, it differs, like you said, in a way that the bowlers have to cater more endurance-related activities and. You know the batsmen do that as well. You know they have running between the wickets, so they do that as well. But then, uh, when it comes to bowlers, I think the the workload that we face, uh, we have to bowl in the practice sessions as well. Um, we have to bowl in the games as well. So all those uh, strides, if you count them in, it it becomes a lot. So basically, it's about maintaining the workload uh, for a bowler. And uh, training wise, I think. Uh, it does differ, as I said now, because of the functional abilities, uh, you know, of a specific exercise. I mean, it has become functional, to be honest. You know, a bowler will do exercises which will help uh, the bowling become better. You know, in a way that you know my strides will be more efficient, my delivery stride will be more efficient, my shoulder will be more powerful while bowling, and at the same time, a batsman. Uh, will focus on training which can give them you know powerful levers because that's what they have to do to get that powerful swing you know they need a, a strong core and um, you know everyone so that again is one thing that nowadays people focus on a lot that you know you can have strong biceps but to transfer that power from your biceps to playing a shot is what you should train actually so then, so the, uh, the the technical ability is what they also focus a lot more on. Exactly. Yeah. So now, how to transfer that power is what you know. Even the fitness trainers these days are uh, focusing on, and that's how it yeah. it becomes specific, right? You know, when you want to train uh, 
say if you are playing soccer you know you have to train specifically so that you get that power in your legs while running so it's the same with cricket i think it has to be very specific so that way it does differ you know batsmen train differently bowlers train differently it's just that the workload for bowlers is a bit more and that's why yeah. you know we have to be careful about that workload yeah there's a lot more impact also right every time you land on uh, after the, is. your bowling stride yeah so yeah, it's about even the jo- joint stick the, yeah, yeah eight times the bo- the weight of the body the impact that comes while landing so yeah yeah um, it's hard on the body basically yeah absolutely actually that's where i think it even more resembles <laughs> endurance training like even marathoners uh, because True. you're all so they don't land with that much force but they do it many more times right over 20 exactly. kilometers so that's exactly. a very similar training uh, but also tell me like if if there's a, how do you train differently for like different formats of the game like if there's a ipl season coming up versus a odi season coming up versus a test series coming up uh, is there like a difference because your body demands of your body is different yeah right, right? like do, do you think about that pre season and then switch training or adjust training accordingly absolutely i think you have to do that and now uh, in this era where you know the changes in the format are also very frequent right you have to like jump from playing uh, red ball cricket to white ball cricket in 3 4 days of time so yes you have to uh, change uh, the type of practice that you do first you know yes with the white ball um, you know it's it's different for a bowler i think me bowling with a red ball in test match or me bowling with a white ball in one day cricket is altogether different so you now i need to get into that mindset you know start using white ball in practice also about the schedules i think when an ipl season is coming up uh, the schedules get postponed you know um, it's all about you know starting your day late and ending it late so then the training also becomes a lot like that you know you you change your uh lunch timings you change your uh uh your practice timings as well according to that and when uh an a big tournament like ipl is approaching then you obviously want to to plan something as well so if say for example i am approaching this ipl you know i would have some plans for uh, for certain batsmen in mind and i would train accordingly as well you know because um once you are here once you are here uh, in the tournament you know this uh less time in terms of you know uh, uh doing your basics and uh getting those right so th- that actually happens before the tournament starts so i think yes uh, for every tournament uh, uh if it's test match the training is different you know, there is more endurance there is more there is larger there is longer spells in the practice sessions just to get the body going that way if it's uh, white ball cricket if it's ipl it's less practice i mean less number of balls but then uh, the planning becomes crucial there no absolutely and that's what's so tough about today's game that there are so many formats so many games happening all the time for you guys to be switching it's that's very right. fascinating how you keep switching between these things and i assume that like when you're entering a test match uh you also need to worry about conserving energy because it's such a long format game uh that you can't can't go into it all guns blazing and then be yeah. out by lunch that's yeah. right uh amazing parallels with the endurance training uh, world but i also mm-hmm. want to talk a little bit about the nutrition side of things so so first mm-hmm. of all in general again on a normal day non match day what mm-hmm. does jadevan atkar eat like what is your usual food regime like so uh, to start with i am a vegetarian i have been a vegetarian all my life and uh, um, and i come from uh, i come from a um, you know family which which wasn't really fancy about nutrition and stuff to if i can say that you know we we still eat normal roti sabji dal rice at home uh, the only fact which now has changed is uh, um you know when when i am at home or say um when i i have to have two both the meals at home in a day you know it then becomes crucial that i don't just focus on um you know that that pattern that we used to follow when we were young you know eating you know, at first it was like you know only if you have roti you have you would feel like you have eaten something like pehle 
पहले का माइंड सेट वही था पहले का मेरा मेरा खुद का माइंड सेट भी वही था बट नाव आई थिंक इट हेज बिकम मोर ऑफ यू नो ईटिंग द राइट थिंग्स एट द मोमेंट इफ आई एम एट होम आई थिंक आई वुड ईट आई डेफिनेटली ईट द रोटी सब्जी वंस आई दर इन द इन द इन द आफ्टरनून फॉर लंच और फॉर डिनर the other time i would uh, make sure that i'll have some uh, some sort of salad to go with rice so that's how i i think i try kind of balance you know i'll have rice in one of the meals and i'll have um, roti sabji in one of the meals and uh, to see that the protein content is fulfilled because being a vegetarian that's one of the hardest parts uh, that's when uh, you know the dairy products come into play uh, you know i don't still uh, make out how people um, you know get their proteins being vegan as well you know i can't imagine myself being a vegan to be honest you know i can't imagine myself not having milk and milk products and the protein and the i mean the paneer and the cheese but um, yeah so that's how you know i kind of uh, try and balance my nutrition needs when i'm at home when it's easier to be honest when you are traveling because nowadays you know all the hotels have got uh, great options in terms of you know uh, and they are ready to modify it as well so at the moment if uh, i would just call them and say you know i need a salad with this this ingredients um and a soup um and with and with boy, some some veggies on the side i think they they'll cater to it at times it's difficult to do that at home but uh, i think it's easier when you are traveling so that's that's uh, that's how i try and manage my uh, nutrition routines to go with Got the supplements it. that i take yeah and the protein yeah. supplements yeah. that we have to take yeah and and these supplements etc is there like a nutrition coach who is monitoring your diet etc at all times um so yes i do have one uh, personally with me like a personal uh, okay. advisor uh, sort of i take i keep taking advice it's um, and i am a believer that it's hard to um, to maintain it all the time because uh, you know the timings change all the time right you know we we'll, i'm here and you know, the timings are different at times i'll have some schedules which doesn't allow me to have lunch on time or doesn't allow me to have my dinner on time so can't really follow a pattern where uh, you know i have to have dinner at 7:30 or i have to have lunch at 1:30 but then uh, what to eat and what not to eat can always be controlled right and that's one thing that i keep taking advice on and i i try to follow it uh, as much as i can you know i i am not saying that i am 100% up to the mark all the time you know i do have my own cravings and i do have uh, you know my own chocolates and mangoes in the room and i can I, i do have that late in the night at times as well so it's not that um uh, you know as i was going to ask for 100% right up there all the time what's your indulgence so chocolates and mangoes are one what are yeah. your other indulgences I and mean, in this season it's only mangoes to be honest i i'll mangoes, be happy if yeah. if whenever i'm craving if people can give me a couple of mangoes i'll be sorted <laughs> <laughs> awesome another thing i have been very fascinated with as a kid also is uh, what do you guys eat on match day because i'm assuming nerves wagera would be so high on on match day so so if it's if the match is starting at 11 what do you have it in breakfast and especially in a test match what do you eat in lunch because most of us get so lethargic after having <laughs> lunch but you have to go out and play again <laughs> so how do you guys manage match day nutrition so again i uh, as i said it's uh, you know being a vegetarian it is uh, it is tricky at times because you also need uh, a good amount of carbs and fats as well you know in as you are saying in between a game you know when say i have bowled 10 overs in the first session of a test match and i come back have my lunch so i have to have that um, that load of carbs as well but then uh, to have it in the right quantity maybe uh, that matters and uh, so you when you don't have a lot of spicy creamy food i think we we got to avoid that um if if it's in general say if it's a, a bowl of dal and brown rice or a couple of rotis with with a sabji which is not spicy uh, i think paneer sabji or uh, uh, we we eat a lot of curd as well i think curd 
buttermilk, those kind of things. If we get it, if you are playing in India, we obviously get it. So I think um, they are uh, good uh, protein sources, and at the time, at the same time, they have good amount of uh, you know carbs as well. So uh, I think lunch kind of revolves around that. You know, you have to have something at least. So one bowl of rice or a couple of rotis with dal um, and curd. Breakfast would be, uh, uh, in general, it would be, say, a couple of uh, brown toast with uh, either of, you know, a dosa or um, or a couple of idlis um, or maybe a bowl of batata poa. So I do like to have one Indian uh, cooked breakfast in the morning, be it a match day or a non-match day. So either either of them uh, would do for me. Um, with um, you know, um, at times if I feel you know I do need to have uh, my protein content up there, you know, I'll have an egg white omelet as well. So that's that's kind Got of uh, the routine that we follow on the match days. That's very interesting to know that like like at least in my head I used to imagine that there's a you know a, a nutrition coach and a and an army of chefs who are basically monitoring every morsel of food and saying ye kha sakte ho ye nahi kha sakte ho ye hi khaoge it's good to know that you guys also have like normal indian food whatever you've grown up eating with i guess that gives you a feeling of groundedness i think that's very important food. when we are when yeah. when we are on this point i think I, i i must say that it's important to stick to to the local uh, cuisines as well what you have grown up eating is what has uh, you know made your muscles grow right so i think your body is acclimatized to those kind of food and nutrients and you don't really need to change it drastically i mean there obviously will be modifications which can make it better but you don't need to you know really change it drastically and uh, you know go to and rely on those western options all the time i think our local cuisine most of the places has a lot of uh, good nutrients in it and and that's what people are now relying upon again you know there was a time a period in between where even we as athletes were told that you know indian food is not good you know you have to avoid indian food but then now again people are coming back to uh, believing that indian food is good in uh, only if you can control it and you can have it in the right amount no absolutely couldn't have said it better that that yeah. we are alive and kicking on our local food so it really yes. can't be that bad uh, but what do you do when you when you are traveling and playing overseas uh, is the availability there a problem and how do you manage that i think yeah overseas it does become tricky at times uh, we have to carry something with us being a vegetarian i used to carry uh, my bakri and theplas with me just in case i don't get what i need uh, and you know being a gujarati again you know thepla are something that travels with us everywhere the theplas and the khakras <laughs> but uh nowadays i think even even overseas uh it's fine because uh wherever we tour um they will uh in advance tell the chef or the association that this will be the requirements and they'll most of the time sort it out for us so we'll get the dal and rice and the boiled veggies and and stuff at the ground as well um and hotels are anyways fine now because you can you can and order anything from outside and most of the places have good asian restaurants and good uh, you know even indian restaurants for people who uh, still don't like that that western flavors so i think nowadays it's it's almost it's similar like, even if you travel overseas you know you have a lot of options to cater to you got it you got it and you you were touching upon uh, uh, supplements uh, can you talk us through mm-hmm. like what sort of supplementation do you do over and above regular food uh so one basic supplement that goes all the time is uh, a whey protein powder you know people who don't have dairy have plant protein but has to have uh, a protein supplement because uh, of the load that we have in our everyday schedules i think that's that's one common supplement that i think every athlete uses especially um uh, in cricket uh, apart from that it depends on um what the blood reports are i mean they at times uh, i i in the past have become b12 deficient so then um, and i i take i take that for say 6 months and then stop it take it again for 6 months 
um so the other supplements depend on uh, the specific needs of the body but this one thing goes without saying and um a bcaa um a supplement to go during the training sessions that's during the match yeah yeah during the match that's two things that i always have yeah but no fancy stuff like glutamine etc unless it is uh, it's been recommended so bcaa and whey protein yeah yeah again that's like that would be busting like it's busting a myth for me because uh, mm. i would have thought that there's a ton of science going ton behind science. this like in terms of uh, but but these are the regular supplements that you know any gym going Absolutely. person uh, uh, or non gym going person should also take actually but <laughs> keeping it simple is the way forward that's what we can yeah. make it out from it <laughs> yeah but has over the years the amount of uh, science in the nutritional and exercise training gone up in general uh, in the background it has absolutely i think it uh, it has gone up by leaps and bounds but again when i say it has gone up you know there are a lot of things that they now are coming back to the basics as well you know after having studied a lot and there must be specifics but uh, so i am not someone who would uh, you know then um so there were times when i used to believe that you know if i really go deep and if i take you know say seven eight supplements which can actually help me become better uh it would help my game but then somehow you know that didn't suit my nature you know i then started believing that whatever i have done till now is what has stick as as brought me here so then why not stick to it and then just uh you know uh, have a couple of things which are easy to do and which can actually uh you know benefit in a bigger way as well you know, just stick to those things and see how it goes but again it has gone up for sure and at times uh the physios or the trainers do uh do suggest us a thing or the other which if it suits you is is great if it doesn't you can stick to your basics got it and when you're entering a tournament let's say you've been playing for the last so many years do you get a distinct sense of feeling that i'm entering this one with a high level of fitness and high level of prep versus this one where i'm not feeling at the top of my fitness game and does that impact you like do you get that feeling uh, in different tournaments um, not really i think nowadays in uh, in cricket especially the amount of competition that you have Uh, you have to mm-hmm. have uh, up there or always be at the top yes yeah. for for any tournament be it a state tournament or be it an ipl tournament because you know people are watching you all the time your performance is evaluated all the time so even if i am not good in one mm-hmm. tournament it's going to hamper my image and you know people yeah. are going to think that either i have i have lost what i had or i am not serious about my game so you know that's and that's not allowed i think in in the sport nowadays you have to be right up there right on top of your game and fitness all the time if you are playing a tournament yeah yeah but you know as as lemon outside like the media keeps telling us that virat kohli's uh, fitness regime is so intensive and look how fit he keeps like are there certain people in the gang who are like Uh, who actually go, are at the next level in terms of fitness and does that impact people's games or is is just if you're playing at an international level everyone is like pouring their heart into yeah uh, see, as i said the culture of fitness has changed in in a way that mm. you know uh, since the last 4 or 5 years since virat has uh, come in i think he has played a big role in uh, changing that culture um and once the culture has Uh, has become like that i think everyone is is a part of it you know everyone is aware of what they are doing everyone uh, knows what is required to be done uh, at a specific point of time even out of the tournament you know if we are at home you know people uh, are nowadays you know so much uh, aware about what needs to be done and what not and it's in the culture now so uh, it's not just about what uh, a couple of individuals are doing at the top it's about you know how people have now started to take the game and how people have now um started to believe that you know what you do um off the field uh the training that you do or 
say for example uh, the practice or the yards that you put in um, what you eat is actually going to matter uh, when you are on the field so that's yeah, basically the, the the belief that the has floor changed. has risen yeah the floor has risen everyone is much better and and as you said some exactly. folks have contributed to that mindset shift yes awesome uh, jade at the end of this i want to finish with a with a quick rapid fire of a few questions which gives us a sneak peek into <laughs> our indian cricket team etc so so the questions i'm going to ask you are you can answer across the national ipl teams whichever teams you played with whatever yeah. comes to my mind because yeah, ah, whatever is, comes to this is tricky because you know i'm in an ipl team there are a lot of foreign players and then <laughs> some names will come up some more so yeah so i'm going to quickly shoot five six questions so who's the yeah. fittest guy you ever come across um ab de villiers ab de villiers who is the guy who loves his sweets and desserts the most <laughs> i am one of them i am not going to name myself <laughs> uh, i'd say ishan sharma i know he Ishan. he loves eating he eats a lot so maybe he would love his dessert as well i'm not sure how much he is eating now <laughs> okay then the next question uh, answer is interesting who is most likely to overeat during lunch in a test match overeat during lunch time in a test match uh <laughs> so i think it has to be so if i if i can say saurabh tiwari just because uh, <laughs> you know in one of the india tours that we had to australia this is back in 2011 uh, um, you know it was an india a tour and as i said previously it was a little hard uh, to to manage food overseas because there weren't a lot of options so we had ordered uh some burgers from mcdonalds just because the food at the ground wasn't good and yeah. we had ordered there were 15 players so we had ordered 15 plus the support staff we had ordered some 18 19 burgers and when we came out there were five or six burgers left so saurabh tiwari <laughs> ate the rest of it in lunch <laughs> who is most likely to skip training sessions mm i think uh there is no one even even a single person i can think of in the indian team at the moment super maybe let's go in the past and i would say uh, virendra sehwag maybe you know i believed in hitting it out of the park i believed in batting yeah. a lot not training mai field pe dekh lunga sahi hai who has the most perfect set of abs uh i think at the moment virat and uh, bumrah they have got a great body without any any fat whatsoever and hardik as well yeah oh wow superb and last question who's the fastest runner uh this again uh there are two parts of it if it's running between the wickets i would still say uh dhoni and virat yeah. if it's just sprinting it would be uh, ravindra jadeja for sure Nice. It's probably the fittest on the field I have seen. Got it. Awesome. This has been so amazing, Jadev. Thank you so much for being yeah. so candid and for giving us a peek into what your life looks like. And it's such a great thing to know that you know all of us have the same tools, the same food, the same access to everything that you also have, right. and yet you play at such a high level. So we have no excuse. to not be uh, keeping fit thank you so much for doing this it's been it a was pleasure. a pleasure sashank it was a pleasure to be here and wish you guys all the best with uh, the field that you are in you all guys are taking care of a lot of nutrition needs of players nowadays and you know, i do have my bars sorted for the season wow so even pro athletes keep it simple and eat mcdonald's once in a while If you found this interesting do hit the subscribe button and never miss another video from the whole truth and hey tell us in comments whose fitness journey would you like us to decode next